Chicago. Welcome to the Chicago Sports Podcast presented by Goose Island, the official beer of CHGO. Honk, honk. Got a great show for you today. Kevin Kaduk joined as always by Luke Stuckmeyer. Today's special guest, the man in the middle, not Herb Lawrence, it's Vinny Duber. You'll have to settle for me. I just saw Herb walked in. Maybe he could be a, uh, a late late replacement if uh, if the fans demand it. We might have to. I don't know. Um, how's it going, Vinny? It's going good. It's been a while since you've been on the Chicago Sports Podcast. I think you may have been on the inaugural one and then it's never true. again. It's possible, yeah. That you know, hey, I thought, I thought we got rid of the heart grow fonder, right? <laughs> I thought there was a reason for that. Yeah. <laughs> Man, everybody must have been busy this afternoon. I've been looking, all over the world since then. You have been back from Australia. I've back, heard. back from Australia for for the last for the last month and a half. Back from <laughs> Australia, but yeah, I was. I, I, I put on these boots here. today. Obviously, it's snowing here in Chicago, which I hate. I hate winter, but mm. uh, I so I had to put the boots on, and I think this is the first time I've worn the boots since uh, since the last time we were hiking in uh, down under. So you ha- actually have Australian soil on there right now. There you go. Don't tell customs. That's better than what uh, Carm had on <laughs> right. his boots uh, <laughs> yeah. during the Bears podcast today. Carm brought the duty back. Ooh. He had a little bit of dog duty. That's upsetting. Yeah, he went through. He's not duty free. That, <laughs> no. that could be that could be kangaroo duty. We're also joined by our producer Lawrence Benedetto, and later on by wow. social maven Casey Standahar for scroll stopping. Uh, but I'm excited to have you here today, Vinny, uh, because we share a love of music. Um, and in Chicago this week, we lost Lynn Bramer. Uh, so in honor of Lynn, we're going to have a Chicago music quiz uh, in the second segment of the show. I done 10 questions. I think our audience is going to like it. I think you're going to like it. Excellent. I don't know if Luke's going to like it, but we'll see. <laughs> well, I'm always bitter, so you never know. <laughs> I just think Vinny's going to, if we're going to do this quiz, I feel like I should have a chance to answer it first, and then when I say I don't know it, then Vinny can answer it, because okay. we, otherwise he's just going to answer all of them. Well, Lawrence is probably going to interrupt both of you guys. You guys won't even have a chance, so. Uh, yeah. yeah I'm just, Lawrence my, is going to dunk. I don't know. I'm really bad at, like, on-the-spot quizzes, though. Uh, you yeah. saw the the Super Bowl shuffle thing. I couldn't remember a damn lyric to save my life when that camera right. was in my face. Johnny Mathis. By the way. Uh, yes, there we go. 37th <laughs> anniversary of the Bears Super Bowl win. Vinny was not here wow. to, to enjoy that. I'm sorry, Vinny. I was six years old. Uh, Luke was, what, they just graduated I, 25, college? No, 30. no, I was in middle school. I uh, faked sickness to see the parade. Did you really? Yeah, feigned an illness, laid on the couch. I did not. The oh, so you didn't go to the parade? You just watched it on television. I just watched it on television. I was going to say that that smacks of something like, oh, I'm going to call in fake sick to school to go to the parade, and because no. it's February, then you just yeah. get actually sick <laughs> yeah, at the parade. Right. It was no, no, obscenely no, cold. Go. That I think I, it was I'm a wearing really my, cold, my right? Genesis. Uh, this is from the 1986 uh, Land of Confusion tour. There you go. So. Was that on purpose? It, th- yes, this was on, in honor of the anniversary. It's it is obviously came out later than January of '86, but yeah, this is my brother's. At this point, like those bears are pretty much Stolen. the Old Testament, um, Genesis. You know. mm, there you see, go. See uh, good bu- good Bible humor here <laughs> on the CHGO. Joe Collins podcast. no longer touring, right? Uh, yeah, I believe yeah. he stopped. Yeah, he stopped. Yeah. He Peter Gabriel, problems. though, I don't know. All right. First off, though, we promise you. Uh, News about Chicago curses. We're going to talk about Chicago curses. The reason I thought about this, guys, was because I have kind of been feeling like the Chicago White Sox have been cursed lately. Uh, it's been 18 years since they won a title, so it's about half of, uh, you know, the, the Chicago Bears. They're it, inching up there. It's probably not that hard to imagine them going 37 years. After all, they went, what, was it 95 years? What, what did yeah, they, they break? Could, they, yeah. they might be on their way to 109. Wow. A hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle Post up, the, I guess. Most of the CHF Cubs guy coming in strong. We're just getting started. Nine yeah. years of futility on the way. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Sit back, relax, and strap it down. You got another, got another at least three quarters of a century on that one. <laughs> I hope that's not the case. But it does seem like whenever something does go right for the White Sox, that they, they, you know, he had some good vibes going with the Andrew Benintendi thing, uh, with the signing. Things were, you know... It, well, it was good. It was relatively good for White Sox land, right? Things were fine. Uh, then the other day, uh, it's revealed that Mike Clevenger is being invested by Major League Baseball for some pretty horrific uh, domestic, you know, violence um, allegations. And now I think a lot of people said, "Oh well, you know, the the White Sox had to have known about this." I don't. 
I don't think that's the case. And that's, that's a whole nother topic. But um, to me, it's just like another bad thing happening to the White Sox. And we came into the CHGO uh, launch last March thinking, okay, the White Sox have a chance to maybe be the best team in town. And time and time again, that just kind of bad news. So let's talk about curses. Shoeless Joe is not in the picture anymore. They vanquished that. Mm -hmm. The Cubs got rid of the Billy Goat curse. What curses currently afflict our teams, not just the White Sox, not the Cubs. I'm talking about the Bears, the Bulls, the Blackhawks. And what were the things that spurred it? Events, I want you to have fun. I want you to have fun with this, right? Because a Billy Goat was fun. Gambling baseball players, maybe not as fun, but it was still kind of, you know, the whole field of dreams. Made a hell of a movie. Made a great movie. Two. I liked Eight Men Out. I'm speaking of that yeah. one. So I've got some. You asked me this earlier, so I, I did a little thinking, and I came okay. up with a few. So what do you want to start with? Uh, you want to start with the Bears? Yeah. Why the Bears can't win? I got two of them for the Bears. Okay. Curse of the coach. Firing Ditka. And no. I- the curse is that the coach didn't give Walter Payton the ball That's in the right. Super Bowl oh, to score a touchdown, and they haven't won like one that. since. That's right. That's like You might worthy. love Ditka. But he didn't give Sweetness the touchdown he deserved in the Super Bowl, and they've never won it since. That does still hurt me to the Curse of the coach. Yeah. So Jarrett today on social media says the number one question he gets from people is about his dad not scoring a touchdown in the that. Super Bowl. Pretty interesting. I believe that. I mean, it was all the touchdowns they scored, and I know it's like one that Ditka has said many times now that he regrets more than anything that has happened in his career, even trading – you know, for Ricky Williams. But uh, <laughs> I have a second one that's almost as bad around the same time. It's the curse of the Honey Bears. Oh. 86, okay. the Bears banished the Honey Bears, the uh, cheerleaders for the Bears. Haven't had cheerleaders since. Haven't won since. The 86 of them. That was, like, right there for you. Like a Honey softball. Bears. <laughs> that's pretty good timing because it, was, I mean, it started right then, and they haven't won since. Because I, I was going to say, like, okay, well, maybe the curse of the Soldier Field renovation, but that doesn't ex- – no. Explain the fallow period between 1986 and, what, 2003. We could combine them. Curse it a coach and a honey bears. <laughs> uh, Vinny, did you have any offerings for the bears? I do. Now, see, obviously, I, I'm of the opinion that, uh, you know, you don't have to – winning a championship is not the only thing that makes for good, good, good feelings and good times in sports, right? Mm-hmm. That's my opinion. You're welcome to your own, of course. But I would say that – once you get to the Bears going to the Super Bowl, uh-huh. that's pretty good. Curse, curse ended, in my, in my opinion. In so my getting thought. there against the so, Colts, because because yeah, because here was the here was the setup that you gave to me earlier today, which yeah. was how did the team get in the current state that it's in? Okay, right. And so I was thinking more. Okay, so the Bears have been bad since Lovey Smith was fired. So you could say curse, curse of Lovey if you yeah. wanted to. But that's kind of an actual thing. I wanted to get a little, a little bit more creative with it. Uh, and this, again, uh, contains some of my personal feelings. It's got to be the curse of Arlington Heights. It's got to be the curse of Arlington Heights. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. They haven't, they haven't even gone there Come yet. On since they Come announced on. that they were going to do that, what have the Bears done? Had the worst team in football. They were the worst. That's, that's the best the thing worst. that's happened. But it was an orchestrated effort, my friend. The Ryan Paul. Terrible. Right. That's no fun. Rigged the, the system. That's no fun. Vinny, I have Who good news. That? The curse of Lovey have, has been lifted by, by Lovey Smith by getting him <laughs> the number one pick. He's decided <laughs> that's enough. The curse of Lovey has been lifted. Now you may move to Arlington Heights and all greatness begins there. No, no. I disagree. I say Arlington Heights is where the Bears go. To keep going down. Land There's really nowhere neighbors. to go but down, but nothing's, nothing's good going to happen of leaving the city. You can't do that. All right. they gonna, I mean, come on. Moving to Arlington Heights. You realize he, he lived in Arlington Heights. I, I, I was born cool. and raised there hey, and live there now. Luke, Luke. Land of good neighbors. That's fine. But you don't put your civic institutions in the suburbs. We're going to move the Field oh, Museum many, to Palatine next? Is that what's happening? Symphony, is the symphony going down to Bolingbrook? Is that what we're doing here? Mm-hmm. Come on. <laughs> we, we have. I don't know how to argue with that. Come on, we have. We have had a, a string. Call- <laughs> we've had a string of mayors in this city that I'd like to move out of town. That's a whole other podcast. Yeah, yeah. And they're is. the reason the Bears are leaving me because yeah, they can't get along. Inviting v- Vinny on this podcast is already worth it because now I under like now I know that he shares a like a belief with Carm, and that I don't know how to feel about that. I I you cannot had- understand why everybody is behind this just because it'll be easier to park. People go. People fill up Wrigley Field 81 days a year. Parking you can't park important. down there. Parking is important. You can't park at Wrigley Field. That doesn't stop people from going to Wrigley Field. 
it's it's the smallest stadium. It stops people NFL. from going to Sox Park sometimes. And what I'll and what I'll definitely say tailgate Sox. Get, getting behind what you said there about the capacity, the I'm I'm actually upset that the I, I think it's ridiculous that the Bears have convinced people to root for a private organization to make more money. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Well, that part- it's unbelievable. They've they have convinced people. Oh, if we move to Arlington Heights, we'll see, there's more seats and we'll sell more tickets. There'll be more money. You get more players. That team's worth like two billion dollars. Well, why are you? But part why- of but part of this <laughs> is is actually had, like we love the Bears and we want the best for them. And this would actually be them becoming a grown up real team instead of this mom and pop organization that plays in a spaceship on the lakefront with that horrible is just, turf that they that rent they from don't the park district. Own. Right? Come on. I'll tell you what. How are they renting from the park district? Yeah. We got Kadek over here ripping mom and pop organizations. I'd rather go. I'd rather go to a dive bar in Ukrainian Village than <laughs> uh, yeah, than have a drink at Chili's out in Arlington Heights before the game. That sounds fun, doesn't it? Well, I mean, that's true. That yeah. dive bar <laughs> is nice not, win, that dive bar is not winning any Super Bowls, Vinny. That's but the, uh... that's what I'm saying. You don't have to win the Super Bowl to have fun. Having been to both Nilda's in the Ukrainian Village and Chili's in Arlington Heights, Nilda's. I will actually take. Wow. That's a yeah. Lived like whew, chili's 100 feet from Nilda's. baby yeah. back ribs. Wow, like, where's your spot? Where are we chili's say, baby back hmm? ribs. Uh, happy village, inner Barbecue town. Sauce. What's your village? in Ukrainian village? Yeah, what's your village? I mean, I love the empty bottle, of course. Uh, Sportsman's Club across the street is is These real nice there on bars, Western. Though that's not Nilda's a, is a dive bar. Nilda's is a Nilda's dive bar. when you walk down in, the street from Empty Bottle, Stella's. I, I that's literally, a dive bar. Empty like, Bottle's kind of a dive bar. Yes, <laughs> I live less than twenty yards from Nilda's. Okay, and I had. Hadn't gone there for years, and finally, my wife and buddy of mine, we decided we're going into Nilda's in Ukrainian Village. And the night we walked in, there was a card table, for lack of a better word, (laughs) across from the bar with just a rotisserie chicken on it for anybody that wanted to pull some chicken off and have some rotisserie chicken. That's 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 a a good story. That's a fun night. You're, you're making my argument for me here, Luke. It was so gross. <laughs> it was a half-picked rotisserie chicken with just like a fork <laughs> and a bunch of plates. But Anytime a bar is giving away free food, it's generally a good thing. I don't know. if It's generally this, bad food, but yeah, it's generally yeah. a good, good situation. You I know. was once in a, at a bar in New Orleans at, when it, at 2 in the morning. They just brought out a big pot of red beans and rice. Oh, that sounds and it great. Was ama- it was amazing. Yeah, that, that sounds different. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Did you go white meat or dark meat? That's my question. <laughs> I, went with the, I went with the wing because I figured it was the messiest. So the team with the second lar- uh, longest drought in the city right now is the Bulls. 25 mm-hmm. years ago. Do the Bulls have a curse? I would submit that it's Jerry Krause saying organizations win championships. And Jerry Reinsdorf bought into that. They broke up the 1998 Bulls. And they haven't come close to winning a title since. I would say, like, I, I would say you're probably correct, but I would say that again to to use that argument I just did with the the Bears, the Bulls had a period of sustained success under Tibbs. Sure. And so let's look at the post Tibbs era. Obviously, I think everybody would yeah, probably gravitate on, towards Jim Boylan. I mean, you realize yeah. that during the famed Tibbs era, we lost Derrick Rose to injury. Yeah. A horrific Certainly, D Rose was cursed. Yeah. Well, so like, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't that be the, like? Wouldn't the curse have to come before that? And that's why Derrick Rose got perhaps, hurt? but it doesn't. Allow me to bring up my oh, favorite oh, sure. uh, part of this, which is uh, which is definitely uh, when John Paxson almost fought Vinny Del Negro. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to go with the punch clock from uh, Jim Boylan. Oh yeah, that would have that would have been fun clock, too. But yeah, that story of J- John Paxson going into the yeah. locker room after the game, I was in and that locker room grabbing VDN's tie yeah. on. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just a we silly, heard it. ridiculous we heard it thing. Through the door, they closed the door, and you heard the scuffle going on. Mercy. Yeah, that was wild. When I was a kid, for obvious reasons, I had a lot of Vinny Del Negro cards. So when they hired him, I was like, all right, here we go. But you spell it differently. Y- yes, correct. Yeah. I, is there a reason why you went with IE as opposed to the Y? I have to take it up with my folks, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He didn't, he <laughs> I didn't, didn't, get, to, I didn't get to make that decision. Is it short for Vincent? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've got one. I came up with this one. It's the curse of my good friend, Storm and Norman Van Leer. Oh, the storm. Love the storm curse of the Norman. deuce. 48 minutes of intensity. Yeah. Here's the problem. Bulls should have retired as number two a long time ago. Yes. And when they didn't, Norm let that lie for a while. He said, that's okay. It's not my time yet. It's not my time. I'm hanging with Mick Jagger. Everything's fine. But then they gave it to Brad Sellers. Oof. That started the badness at number two. 
Jabari Parker wore it. Lonzo Ball, oh, need yeah, I yeah, say yeah. more, is, is wearing number two. Eddie Curry had number two. Oh. Dennis Hobson, number two. Yeah. Khalil El- Elamine. Oh, my gosh. Number two, Storm and Norman Van Leer, because they have not retired Norm's number like they should. Yeah. The curse of Storm and Norman Van Leer. That's good. That's like a good that. one. That wins yeah. for me. I just Googled uh, Chicago Bulls curse just to make sure we didn't miss anything. Uh, something came up from our good friend Will Gottlieb of CHO Bulls. He says that there's a curse of uh, Chicago point guards. Uh, since 2011, here's the games played for each season. Derek Rose, 39, in 2011-2012. And it goes Derek Rose, 0. Derek Rose, 10. Derek Rose, 51. Derek Rose, 66. Uh, then Rajon Rondo actually played 69 games in 2016-2017. Chris Dunn, 56. 46-41. Kobe White bounces back, plays 69 games, mm-hmm. but now we've got Lonzo Ball, 35 games in 2021, 22, and zero games so far in 22, 23. So. But you want an MVP. Again, number two, after Norm was the first to wear it, Rory Sparrow, Brad Sellers, Dennis Hobson, Mark Bryant, Khalil El Amin, Eddie Curry, Tim Thomas, Tabo Cephalosha, Gennaro Tabo. Pargo, Nate Robinson, Jerry and Grant, Jabari Parker, Luke Cornett, and Lonzo Ball. Nobody should ever wear two again in a Bulls uniform. So he, he did curse Lonzo Ball. He did. And wait, is Jay Williams on there? Jay Williams number, wait, 22. number two? He, 22. 22. 22. Yeah, okay. 20, yeah. So, you know. That was, that, I mean, that was a really bad Double curse. curse. Double curse, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, the White Sox. The White Sox, Ooh. pretty obvious in my, uh, in my estimation. Obviously, uh, you know, you could probably point to what will be brought up here, and that's the madness of 2016. With Drake LaRoche and Chris Sale and just <laughs> everything oh, yeah. going with that. But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go even more recent than that. So White Sox, 2021, win the division. Great vibes. Go into 2022, uh, you know, World Series thing. What's missing? What's what changed? They the, took that goose, the goose out of right field. Oh, oh great gosh. point. And all of a sudden everybody gets hurt. They're five hundred, they can't do a thing. Put that goose back and it's uh, right back to the top of the AL Central. I think that's the absolute right answer. I mean, may, maybe Chris Sale tearing up the jerseys, maybe letting Frank Thomas go and hit uh, 500 in Toronto. I mean, I know the Oakland was in between there. I mean, why is Frank Thomas hitting number 500 in, in Toronto in a Blue Jays uniform? Curse of Kenny. I mean, come on, you know, hold on, though. We got, we got Tomei doing it, and he, didn't, he should have been in Cleveland probably and went to hit 500, yeah. don't you think? Goes both ways. I mean, look, I mean, it, at the end of 2005, it was kind of a natural breaking point for Frank and whatever. It still sucked. Agree. I, I mean, I, I would say it's been the curse of stupidity is the obvious thing. Like, they've been a <laughs> dumb organization. Like, they've, they've made some bad moves. Like the Cubs, they've made bad moves. And the White Sox are in the position they're, at, they're in right now because of bad decisions. Mm-hmm. There's no curse. They made bad decisions. And that goes back to the discussion we were having before we went on air. Yeah, there was no Billy Goat. I mean, they were owned by the Wrigley's. Yeah. Wrigley was a guy that was like, all right, let's just market the ballpark, and it doesn't really matter who's out there. It doesn't matter if we have a manager or a college of coaches. Um, Comiskey wasn't the best owner. Comiskey, uh, Comiskey's cheapness led to, led to the 1919 scandal, right? So yeah. do, do the Cubs have a curse? Uh, uh, a, a uh, new one? Yeah, I yes. mean, can, can you say? You, you got, they say oh, I've new. got some. I mean, you can probably list any number of Ricketts-related items, but I'm going to go ahead and just say, <laughs> it uh, is, uh, again, decisions also on the list. You say, you say, how do they get into the state they're in now, right? So they win the World Series in 2016, all is well on the north side of Chicago, mm-hmm. until several days later when in the, in the glow of a World Series win, the parade is that day. Miguel Montero goes on the radio and starts ripping Joe Madden. That's right. That is. <laughs> you're set up for a dynasty. You're set up for a dynasty, and you curse got the Mickey. and you've got the the player uh, ripping the manager for winning the World Series on the radio two days after the fact. The curse of Miguel Montero, or you could say it's the curse of Clark the Cub because that mascot. Well, no is pants. Not great. What, no what pants. Was Clark's first year. With. Not sure. I think it was Not before. Sure. Was, it was it before they won the World Series? It's also. It also could just be the curse of every Cubs fan that has passed on that said. I'll do anything to see the Cubs finally win the World Series. And every living Cubs fan that was like, anything can happen as long as the Cubs win the World <laughs> Series. And then they won the World Series. And 
look at our world. Pretty much everything has happened since then. Uh, sort yes. of, a, sort we, of. A, we got pandemics. We got all kinds of political stuff. Everybody hates everybody. Sort of a Faustian bargain, if you will. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Luke, were you at? Uh, were you on air when uh, Comcast Sportsnet accidentally aired the not safe for work image of Clark the Cub? Uh, yeah. Although that was not. That was not Comcast Sportsnet Chicago. It was oh, Comcast Sportsnet, I believe, Bethesda, Maryland. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was a, it was a different one. So it could be the... Could I, be I the just Clark Googled Cubs. Clark to see when he was born. Yeah, it's... A, uh, that's January 13th, 2014, so... <laughs> it was, okay. It, it was not the Chicago branch of Comcast Sportsnet. I believe it was Bethesda. That's another... Was Chi- unbelievable. It's another Chicago sports hot take I have. What's that? None of the mascots are good. Benny the Bull. Benny the Bull, yeah. I One of the best all time. Disagree. He's rude. He's mean. What about Southpaw? He's beautiful and green. Benny the Bull used to be hilarious and funny. He had the big hula hoop waist. His number was a bullseye. He had like big goofy eyes and was he funny. He a little pop. And now he's people. just dumping popcorn on people. He's stealing people's shoes. He's riding around on the little dirt bike and putting people in danger. He's he, he's, he mean. Lo- he lo- he's mean. Yeah, he's mean. He's a lo- menace. He is a menace. He's not cartoony. <laughs> he's just mean. Tommy Hawk did injure someone I know. I don't, so I don't I like Tommy Hawk. What about Ribby and Southpaw? rhubarb. You're more of a Ribby and rhubarb. I, I would. I would yeah. love to see Ribby yeah. and rhubarb yeah, come back. Probably. Absolutely. What's what about the uh, yeah. the curse of the Wrigleyville Taco Bell? It's not there anymore. It's been gentrified out. Sure. Yeah. Sure. If you want to go that far. And that's kind of a Goose Island type of thing. Take take the Taco Bell out of Wrigleyville and. No. Yes. Maybe Yum Yum Donuts. Getting, uh, yeah, but they won the World don't, Series after Yum Yum. I don't care. I just love Yum Yum Donuts. I like yeah. Santa. The yeah, I don't think you're finding a lot of uh, big Taco Bell backers on the uh, panel today. Here. Like, yeah, what what was good about that talk about drunk idiots at like two in the morning? Like, when all you got to do is walk like three other bl- three more blocks, and you could go to like actual yes. good places. Yeah, it was just kind of an institution. It was right there. I've you're walking down Addison. You see the want, yeah. you see the Never Taco Bell there. sign. You know you're almost over the field. You are on an island. Never once. I'm not on an island. That. That, like, that Taco Bell has a cult following on Twitter. If you're going to say, like, it's something you're on your way to Wrigley and it's, like, now you know you're close. It's it would a landmark. Be that, no, the no, comic book store. <laughs> just the one that's like Which is also the gone. The one that was, yeah. I lived across the street from that for, yeah. for two years. What was that years. one called? Oh, man, it was called, Any like, days? Yesterday's. Yesterday's. Yesterday's or something yeah. like that. Had yeah. a big picture of Spider-Man on the side yeah. of it. Yes. Uh, it never went in it because it looked oh, I did. structurally oh, I did. unsound. Yeah. Complete, like, complete fire hazard. That, on, that, on, the peop- uh, that the city had not shut that down. Yeah, I went in there one I remembered as a kid going by, walking by. And that, no. That was when you were getting close. I went in there, and that guy, the guy started rolling out, like, old copies of the Tribune he had from, like, the Civil War. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was nuts. That's kind of awesome, but also, yeah. All right. Uh, Blackhawks. Black Hawks, yeah. Bieber. But they won since then. Curse Justin of the Crest. Bieber's- Justin Bieber walked all over the Crest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there's a great Blackhawk. I mean, I've I got the – well, I've got uh, – the one I came up with was the curse of uh, Marion Hosa's sweat allergy. Okay. Which is mm. kind of a sad one, obviously, but, mm. you know, that was a bummer. Trading I, Tavo, maybe? What do you think, Lawrence? Trading Tavo. I mean, just trading curse all, of Tavo. The, just all the terrible trades. They trading, that sounds like something out of, like, Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess <laughs> you could say it's the curse of Dale Talon. I mean, the curse of Tavo. Obviously, they won three, three Stanley Cups after Dale Talon departed or was ushered out. But maybe after, you know, but it was with his core. Yeah, I mean. He who shall not be named in the CHEO Sports Studios never built off that core and won, won past it. Hmm. Yeah. He could have done that with Panarin and, and Tavo and your guy, Philip Deneau. Ah, uh, Philippe Deneau. What about the curse of shoot the puck? Oh, yeah, they got rid of it. I believe the last year that I did shoot the puck on live broadcast – was 2015. Mm. Then 2016, we did it, but it was scaled way back, and then it was gone. They also made gone. the ice crew start wearing pants. Well, that's what I'm saying. That yeah. All of that started <laughs> happening around the same time. The curse of... <laughs> the curse of the ice crew's the pants. The, cur- the curse of ridding, ridding uh, the United Center of blatant sexism. <laughs> a- yes. Actually, actually, it all... It all and, but is that kind of a honey bear thing? Though, and right? actually, it all went down till... I, at one point, I was told, you know, like, they're going to bring different people this year. Uh, let's, let's make sure it's, you know, sponsors, which was a good idea. And the very first person in the preseason that I had for Shoot the Puck was... Um, who's the actor? Show me the money. 
Tom Cruise? No. Oh. <laughs> Cuba Gooding, uh, Cuba, Jr. Gooding, Cuba, Jr. Gooding, Cuba Gooding Jr. <laughs> yeah. And Cuba showed up blasted out of his mind. I mean, blasted <laughs> out of his mind. And he says to me before the interview, I've been up for 48 hours straight. And I'm like, this is like, he was like all over the place. And Cuba Gooding makes the shot, shoot the puck. And they told me like, we're going to scale it down. It's going to be much more reserved. I'm like, okay, great. And Cuba Gooding starts doing a strip tease oh, on no. the ice during shoot the puck. Ends up taking his whole shirt off, whipping it around, throwing it, and that was pretty close to the end to shoot the puck. That's a shame. <laughs> the, why, well, why don't they? Why don't they just make it? Because it was always it was always a, a a woman, a drunk guy, and a little kid, right? Yeah, that's right. Why didn't they just make it little kids all the time? Just have it be a kid's thing. That would be great. That'd be fun, right? Yeah, that would be yeah. fun. Well, they do well, the midget an idea the for the new hockey thing. thing. Yeah, but the shoot the puck's more entertaining, I think. Sure. Yeah. To us laymen, to us hockey laymen. Yeah. Yeah. Key layman. Yeah, I, I have nothing to say about that. <laughs> I you got know. nothing. Luke, tell us about Athletic Greens. Well, let me tell you. First of all, <laughs> it's a product that I use every single day. I started taking AG, AG1 because I didn't have time, wanted butter, better gut health, more energy, optimized immune system. I don't know if you know this, Vinny. I've been on it for about 10 months now. Love oh, it. I, I can tell, Luke. I well, can tell. Of course you you're can. looking good. Uh, it, it doesn't taste super healthy. Instead, it is super healthy, and it has a mild tropical taste that I look forward to taking early in the morning. So here's what it is. One scoop of AG1. You absorb 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to start your day right. It's a special blend of ingredients they have here, supporting your gut health, your nervous system, immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging, all those things. I get a real boost of energy from it, so I take it first thing in the morning on an empty stomach and zing, there I go. Lifestyle friendly too, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, gluten-free, or dairy-free, or if you're like Lawrence, you're all of those, you're all good with AG1. You're investing in all-in-one nutritional insurance for less than three bucks a day, recommended by professional athletes, more than 7,000 five-star reviews, Right now, time to reclaim your health. Arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash CHGO Cubs or CHGO Bulls, CHGO Socks. Again, athleticgreens.com slash chgo cubs to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance game time game time is the hottest new ticketing site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports concerts and shows if you've ever dreamed of sitting in a seat you never thought you could like the 50 yard line courtside behind home plate floor seats at a concert it is possible with the game time app the biggest last-minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy, and you will not find a better de deal this season anywhere. Game time is created by the fans and for the fans and guarantees the lowest price. If you love CHGO, then you will love game time, and the best way to support us is by buying your tickets through the link in the description. Join over 15 million people who have downloaded the game time app and score the best seats to all your favorite events. You guys use game time lately? Not recently, but I am thinking about going to a Bulls game here before uh, it gets really ugly this season. I, I'm, here's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting before? for three. <laughs> Too late. I, I'm waiting for four bad games in a row because then I know they'll beat somebody they're not supposed to beat, and that's the time to use the game time. If they've won two in a row against good teams, hold off and wait till the next game. <laughs> yeah, seriously. They always, they always bring you back in i'd like to see these guys the blackhawks before the season's over but uh last year we went to uh the red stars game with oh, game yeah. time we well, got really, tickets really. tickets uh, to go down to bridgeview uh, okay so that was fun so i'm thinking about going down to memphis at the end of next month we're gonna go see grizzlies nuggets a saturday night Ja versus jokic and i think i might yeah, uh, pull good. out game time for that that might be a tough ticket down there though i don't know if, like how I don't go, know go to graceland is. while you're at it yeah. i'm definitely gonna go to graceland TCB. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, talk about TCOB. This week's Taking Care of Business Award winner is our guy, our late great friend, Lynn Bramer from WXRT. Uh, Chicago has been mourning all week. Um, he, he passed away from cancer at the age of 68. Everyone's best friend in the whole wide world. Um, soundtrack to a lot of mornings. 
I know for me, uh, probably you guys as well, uh, just th- to see the outpouring of support for, for Lynn and the appreciation for the way that he lived his life um, was pretty awesome. I, I had the opportunity to run him. You know, I can't call him a friend or whatever, but he had, you know, he kind of ran in circles around Wrigley Field and uh, so was always kind of able to shake his hand or give him a cheers at, you know, one of the opening day events in, in Wrigleyville. Um, so so it, was, it was pretty sad to see. Um, I don't know if you guys had any experience with Lynn. I didn't know him on a personal level. Like we would exchange um, Twitter comments back and forth yeah. and stuff like that. Um, huge again, Cubs fan. Yeah. Huge Cubs fan. And, you, and everybody that knew him or listened to him knew that he was big with the Cubs, right? Right. But he was huge in the music scene too. And so having grown up, uh, heaven forbid, in Arlington Heights, Vinny, uh, <laughs> listening, to, listening to XRT, he was – the voice of a lot of good times. Um, one of my favorite bands growing up through like college was Freddie Freddie Jones Band. Oh yeah, and XRT always had Freddie Jones Band concerts, and Lynn was always the guy introducing the band and taking him around. In fact, I saw the Freddie Jones Band on Twitter today. They were the just one, here. Yeah, they just had a long obit to him, like saying. And I also saw. I went by Allstate Arena on the way in to work today. Uh, formerly uh, Rosemont Horizon for all the oldies out there. Sure, and. They have on their big billboard outside the big Lynn Bramer yeah. obit on there, and I think that's that's pretty cool that, 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 first of all, they still have it and that they recognize how many concerts he brought there and how many music fans he brought there. Yep. There was a pretty cool um, video posted by uh, Chris, I think, Swiak, um, the producer from XRT and, and one of Lynn's friends, where Lynn was just... Um, uh, Dancing and singing along in the studio to, to Bob O'Reilly by the Who. That's and pretty fun. It was really cool. And he's doing the, he's doing the arm wave. <laughs> yeah. and if you have a chance, go check that out. Well, he's, he's another one of the guys that we've lost in the last year or so where people will say, and it, they're totally right, you'll never hear anybody say a bad word about him. Right. Like, there aren't a lot of those people out there, but he is one of them. I've never heard anybody say anything remotely negative. Well, it just sucks Lynn. because... Chicago radio is a less interesting place without Lynn Bramer, right? And and what he was able to do with that whole group, I mean, with Terry Hemmer and Frankie Lee and everyone else. Is, Marty Leonard's. Richard yeah, Marty Leonard's was just, it's just like part of a, a, a time, right? I mean, that was us growing up and, and something you can identify with. And it, it's, it's going away, like. Chicago radio is not as interesting without Les Grobstein, right? Right. We've, we've been without Robert. him for a year, so... It just sucks when when this stuff happens, and and Lynn and Lynn and Les were were both still relatively young. So, um, anyhow, like we just wanted to give a shout out to Lynn uh, in honor of in honor of Lynn and in honor of Vinny's visit today. I put together a Chicago music quiz, ten questions. I hope you guys uh, will play along. I hope people in the audience will play along. And if you like this, make sure you hit that like button. Um, should I just get to it? Yeah, get to yeah. It? All right. Question number one. I say I get none. Name the recording studio where the Rolling Stones held their first American recording sessions in 1964 and 1965. Chess Records. Chess Records is absolutely that right. That would be what? Is that 21, 2120 or 2150 South Tw- Michigan Avenue? 2120 oh, South He's Michigan Avenue. I have no shot here. <laughs> no shot. The legend is that Muddy Waters helped the band unpack when they got here. And the first recording of Satisfaction happened in that studio, although it's not the one that, that ended up uh, becoming what we know Satisfaction to be. So. Yeah, I would say that is, uh, you know, all the stuff that happened to Chess Records prior to the Rolling Stones showing up there is probably Chicago's greatest musical contribution to the world, I would say. Absolutely. Yeah. And By the way, uh, Muddy Waters, name the, uh, name the Chicago suburb. Arlington Heights. Where, uh, where he spent his, his final years. I'll prospect. It's a, it's a western <laughs> suburb. Hinsdale. I should know this. Oh, wait. It Oak is Park. like that. It's, is it Hillside? No. No. Villa it's Park. right there. Villa Park. It's right there. Villa Park. Not LaGrange. Park. Westmont. 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 And there's actually a Muddy Waters Park in Darien that I <laughs> sometimes drive by. Tremendous. Uh, probably the best mural in the city is of Muddy Waters down there on State Street, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm off to a good start. So Number far. two, what was the original name of the band Chicago? It is the name of their first album. Chicago Transit Authority. There we go. Vinny, two for two. Do we have, 
Do we have like a got it right uh, song? Just give me the goose hog. Uh, I do know that they did <laughs> sing the song for Monsters in the Morning. Huh? Nope, that's not. <laughs> that's for you. Uh, that was that was. Now there is some all time. There is some all time Chicago uh, music knowledge right there. Monsters all right, I think I might get Vinny on this next one. Nope. Three. What high school did Chance the Rapper go to? No idea. Oof. Casey, you know it? I feel like I actually do know this, but I can't come up with it. Where? Nope. She says Lane Tech. That would Not be Lane. the north side. No, no. I'll go with Morgan Park. Jones College Prep. Damn it. I didn't Class have, of 2011. I, didn't have that. I, I thought I did. Didn't have it. Now, now you can play the fail sound. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. What Chicago band first played the Metro on October 5th, 1988? And it's Smashing played, Pumpkins. Played there 37 times since. The Smashing Pumpkins. That would have Luke been my is guess. on the board. That would have been my guess. Hey. But Luke, Luke buzzed in Too first. fast. <laughs> Woo. Wow. How about that? Five. Which legendary Chicago band grew out of a band named the Salty Peppers in 1969? Salty Peppers. I, oh, 69. So I will they, guess. they became something in the 70s. I will guess. Sticks. Nope. No, no, no. Uh, shit. Uh, I don't have I'll it. I'll give you a genre. It's a funk band. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Earth, Wind, and Fire is right. Vinny. My gosh. Vinny Mr. 3, Music. Luke 1. <laughs> yeah, but my 1 was faster than anything he's It's answered. very true. You didn't even let him finish reading the question. That's right. All right. <laughs> That's what you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> who? You guys aren't going to get this one. I'm sorry. Uh, who played the inaugural show at the House of Blues Chicago on November 26, 1996? 1996. This is actually probably the most Chicago answer ever. Oh, I bet oh, I know who it is. Oh, is it Dan Aykroyd and no, 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 no. Jim Belushi? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's yeah. not yeah. an actual band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Blues Brothers. Well, Blues Brothers. the Blues Brothers in quotes. They actually yeah. did open. I think with G- once when Jim is involved, we can't yeah. really call him that. <laughs> so they actually opened up for James Brown, but I was reading a Chicago Tribune article for, uh, of that night. And apparently everyone just left after the, the Blues Brothers played. They didn't stick around to see James <laughs> Brown? Not. Jesus. I, I feel like That's we each wild. get half Oof. credit for that, yeah. so I'm one and a half now. I'm going to give a shout-out to Kevin Kellum, who says, Love the Chicago cultural chatter. Great conversation on Lynn Bramer and beyond. Thanks, I, like, uh, I like his initials, Kevin Kellum. What's up, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Is that your burner? You just typing this <laughs> yeah. in over there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which band, number seven, which band was supposed to play Petrillo Bandshell in Grant Park on July 27th, 1970, but could not take the stage because a riot was breaking the up? The Beatles. It's not the Beatles. 1970. No. They were, they were, they were done touring by 1970. I'm going to go back to the Rolling Stones. 70. The Who. It's not, yeah, it's not a Chicago band. The Who. That's this could who. be any number of people. 1970. I guess you kind of have to know. Led this. Zeppelin. It's a Sly and the Family Stone. Oh, there you go. That they was... had uh, they had supposed they they had. See, wait, how, what was the question again? Read the question. Which band was supposed but supposed to play Petrillo Band Shell in Grant Park on July 27th, 1970, but couldn't take the stage because a riot was breaking out. See, you should have written the question differently. You made it a little one of those Jeopardy build the question into the word. Couldn't take the stage because there is a riot going on, which is the name <laughs> of a Sly and the Family Stone album. That's, that's a good call. Mm, that that. <laughs> you get Next a half time. A point you write for the that. questions, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> you write the question. Number eight. Name the two bands who played two legendary shows at Soldier Field in the same week in July 1994. Uh, you two. That's a good guess. Uh, I'll say the Rolling Stones. Uh, no. 94. Bon Jovi per- Pearl and Jam Poison. Was, it's got to be Pearl Jam, right? No. Pearl Jam is one of them. Really? And yeah. Bon Jovi. Not bon Pearl Jovi. Jam was playing Soldier Field already by yeah. 1994. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It was, uh, I was at there. It was probably Nirvana? one of the best shows I'd ever been to because they were in the middle of their Ticketmaster fight and it kind of felt like, all right, maybe Pearl Jam's going to take down Ticketmaster. Spoiler alert, they did not. No, they but did it not. was a hell of a show. Okay. So. Uh, I think two or two or three days previous on the same stage and they just left the stage up and Pearl Jam played. R.E.M.? Grateful Dead played. Oh, the it was dead. Jerry Garcia's last show. Last show. So that's why it's mm. a, a legendary show from that standpoint. All right. Number eight. Or no, that was number eight. Number Smashing nine. Pumpkins. Which band <laughs> records its album, albums, at the loft in the old Irving Park neighborhood? Wilco. 
Yeah, I said Will Lawrence Cohen. is on the board. Yeah, Will that's, the old, that's my old neighbor. I used to see. Uh, well, how come he didn't get it right? What is it, Jeff? Uh, Jeff Tweedy? Is yeah. that right? Tweedy. Yeah. 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 I used to see him at Bongo Room all the time. Oh yeah. He loves the Bongo Room. They were on Milwaukee. I my friend, we, I was eating the friend. He's like, "That's Jeff Tweedy." I'm like, "I don't know who that is." <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, the tenth and final question: Which famous rock and roll couple formed on October 12th, 1991 after a show at the Metro. I'll say Sonny, Sonny and Cher. I'll say Kurt Cobain <laughs> and Courtney Love. That's absolutely right. Is that a guess or did you know that? That was a guess, but the year kind of So that's made a fa- that's a famous that, yeah. Nirvana show. And uh Courtney was dating Billy Corgan at the time. She gets to the show, goes in the dressing room, Billy's with another girl. And so she says F this and she goes off and meets Kurt. They end up later that night at the Days Inn on Diversity uh, Avenue. That's still there. I pretty know cool. that Days Inn. Yeah, yeah it's still there. It's the still Rock there. and Roll Days Inn. A lot. I stayed there before I saw Freddie Jones Band on. Uh, Did you really? On it a comes New Year's full Eve circle. Once. Wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> how was this not in the? How was this not in the trivia? I think we all would have gotten it. What rock star saw his first rock and roll band at the Cubby Bear? Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl. Yeah. But who was it? That's a good one. Who was the band? I forget. Punk band. Uh, something Pistols. Mm, I don't think that's right. I can't remember who it was. <laughs> it was a punk band. I just can't it remember It was a punk it band. Which band spent the summer of 1989 hanging out at Smart Bar and Metro trying to r- write their second album? I'm sorry, what year did you say? 1989. Oh, well, I shouldn't know. They had to leave because uh, the, the, the singer started hooking up with uh, the daughter of a Chicago uh, police lieutenant. <laughs> and they wanted to run them out of town, so they went back to Los Angeles. Can you give us hints? Well, there's a hint. They went Guns back to Roses. Los Angeles. Guns and Roses. Guns and Roses. Wow. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That's two for me. What? Yeah. Okay. Two for me. And Guns, I came Guns up and Roses with a lived in Chicago in the summer of '89, really? and yeah. huh. apparently, like legend has it, I remember talking to someone. I used to go to that Y over. Is that on Polina? Yeah. Um, Polina and Lincoln. Yeah. I was like talking to someone about that, and they're like, "Yeah, they used to come in there and like slash and duff." would come in in jeans, and they'd just take their shirts off, and they'd be smoking and just lifting weights. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. See, those, are two, those are two bands from my child. Smashing Pumpkins and Guns Roses yeah. are the two answers I got. Awesome. I think that was fun. You guys have fun? It was fun. It yeah, was absolutely. Fun. Yeah. Good time. Did you have fun uh, in your follow-up visit to the Chicago Sports Podcast? Tremendous thing? being here. Yeah. What a time. Well, thank you for stopping by. Let's, uh, let's not be strangers. Absolutely. All right. And you will be on the CHGO White Sox podcast coming up in about 20 minutes. In mere make, minutes. Make sure you check it out there. Naked Ray Gun. Naked was the Ray song. Gun. Band, that's yeah. what it was. Naked Thank Ray you, Gun. Kevin. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. All right. First, I want to tell everyone about DraftKings, four NFL teams, two conference championship games, and only a few more shots to win big on the playoffs with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Counting down to Super Bowl 57, new customers can bet just $5 and get 200 in free bets instantly. Not a new customer? You can feel the conference championship thrills with stepped-up same-game parlays. Take your shot at an even bigger NFL payout and boost your winnings with each leg you add up to 100%. I don't know who I'm going to bet this weekend, but I have some of those free bets left because... I don't I, like maybe I shouldn't admit to this, but it took me a little while to sign up for DraftKings Sportsbook. I finally did it last week. I yeah, you bet five dollars and I got two hundred dollars in free bets, which is like eight twenty five dollar free bets. And um, so I've got a few of those remaining. I don't know who to pick on the Bengals and Chiefs. Boy, uh, Bengals. I, I do think it's the. I think the Bengals win it. I just I can't buy that his ankle is going to be okay. Obviously, he's going to play, Mahomes. But I high ankle sprain. How's he going to be mobile? He's hopping around like he was last. He looked good in the press in the press conference. Joe Burrow's a real deal too. I don't know. I, he I looked think mobile. I think he, the Bengals he climbed going up back to, to the, the dais. He was fine. You don't agree, Lawrence? No, you're just doing this wrong. So I'm a little annoyed. Why you're, am I doing it wrong? Well, look who's in. Hi, I'm here. Now. Yeah. I'm not done with the ad read. <laughs> I, well, I, I know, but then you invited other people to talk during your ad Anyhow. read. So. <laughs> Download the DraftKings yeah. Sportsbook app and use code CHGO. New customers, again, can bet $5 on the conference championships and get 200 in free bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code CHGO. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See those show notes for details. And introducing Scroll Stoppers with Casey Stanahar. I'm here. 
That's the intro we were looking for. That's, That's we the wanted. intro. That was the big. Everyone got a sneak peek. Again, I don't know why Casey's the only one that gets an intro song around here, but that's another you story. You guys used to know? have one. I don't know what happened Stuck to it. Stuck in duck time? Do you I asked for Top Gun a long time ago, and <laughs> Lawrence has said no. That's uh, copyrighted. I kind of wish I was in that quiz, because I didn't realize that Earth, Wind, and Fire was a, is they a Chicago band. Yep. That's cool. I wouldn't have done well on the quiz. Clearly. <laughs> Did you hear I got two right? I did hear. Very and nice I came stuff. up with a question that they didn't know the answer to. Good work. Three right, really. <laughs> what you got for us, Case? Uh, this is fun. Some fun stuff going on. This was clearly a TikTok prank that we have now discovered was staged by <laughs> the Loyola Ramblers uh, during their basketball game the other day. They had a... Um, it, was at, it was in Duquesne. It was at, yeah. Duquesne. at Duquesne. I'm sorry. It was at Duquesne, but they were playing Loyola. My bad. Where they had a Uber Eats driver basically walking onto the court with Uber Eats McDonald's. So take a look at this. Was Usher? Let's see if we can see this. No, this is. Yeah. Um, there he yeah, is. I don't think it was staged by the school. It was. Sta- this guy is a YouTube guy. idiot. But everyone's yeah, right. saying everyone's saying it was staged by the school, but it was like One on purpose to go viral. It's staged for sure because he's wearing a microphone, right? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I didn't was seem the like the announcers were in on it. Was the I'd ref in on it because he's like pushing him back? I need no, to know. He, no, he's pushing him back because there's a freaking idiot on the goddamn court at a basketball game. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Get out of here. You yeah, and jail. he keeps running. It, you know, I would have thought here's, the here's ref was in here. on it if it turned into like the ref then started doing a dance move because his Mickey D's yeah. was showing up on the court. I think this was okay, a YouTube. So first trying off, is it, this shot. is not Wait. even like it's not even funny. It's not even original because my guy Loaf. Right I don't know if you guys watch Loaf on <laughs> on YouTube. He actually did this last August at like a, a summer league game well, maybe in that's Minnesota. Where they got somewhere. it from? It's absolutely where he got it from. And Loaf actually went out at, into the middle, and it was like during a free throw. So at least there was actually no game right. going on. Um, and he went out, and he. Tyus Jones was actually at the game, and he was saying the DoorDash was for Tyus Jones. So, like, wow. this guy, he's just ripping off, probably ripping rip off, off Loaf, who's one of the bigger YouTubers. Regardless, it's kind of funny. It is, but it's also a felony if you do it in the wrong place. Like, you do that in an NFL game or at a yeah. tennis match. Oh, yeah, match yeah, yeah you're arrested. NBA Unless you're game. Shannon Sharp, you then are. you can just yell at players Monica and then you get to go back to your seat. Felony, you run onto the field at Wrigley Field, felony. By the way, I, I wanted to buy the Shannon Sharp sweater for my trip to Memphis. I think it's 3200 bucks. Yeah, obvi- it's Shannon Sharp wearing it like he's a rich man. <laughs> you think I could just buy it, keep the tags on? Yeah. It's I mean, a- you've now said that on, on air. They might know. Yeah. <laughs> just gave that right, away. This is fun, guys. We love Goose because of Goose Island, but the Anaheim Ducks posted this yesterday. Uh, this is their little uh, mascot, Ben Affquack, they call him. Ben and it's a duck playing Affquack. the drums. I mean, You realize a goose is not a duck. I know, but we love we love these animals. We love waterfowl here at Zoo's Juno. <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, that's really funny and really cute. That's probably better than that cat in the, the Gottlieb video. If you're listening and not I watching, mean. it's on the Anaheim Ducks Twitter account. It says, it's now a thing. We win. Ben Affquack plays the drums. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's a duck playing a I, drum. I feel ben like a duck, a, a duck playing a drum might be able to reverse any of the curses that we talked about. Ooh. Gets laugh. <laughs> Half laugh. Uh, gets laugh. <laughs> gets laugh. Uh, he's, uh, he's actually from Minnesota, this duck. If you go on Instagram, I believe it's... He's not from Anaheim? Oh. He's, I think it's the Minnesota he's duck. He's a Minnesota like, Do you think duck. he's actually from news. Minnesota? Do you think he just invented that oh, story? Yeah, line? that's a Minnesota... You could tell I, it's a Minnesota duck. I'm just saying, if <laughs> oh, you yeah. look up <laughs> Ben Affquack, right Quack, if you look up Ben Affquack, his... Instagram is, I believe, the Minnesota Lawrence, duck. let's see what you posted under He's Ben Affleck. Oh, born and oh, raised in uh, Do you think any Minnesota. duck would do that, though? If you, you think it's just like... Look what Lawrence did. <laughs> 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 it's b- literally Ben Affleck. Smoking a cigarette. Ben Affleck. A cigarette, yeah. and he has a duck head. Yeah, well, I got 12 likes. What's up with that? It's hilarious. Good Who's work. he dating now? Who's the latest person? Jennifer Lopez. He's married to J Lo. Oh, I, I thought that was again. done. Isn't that done again? No, they rekindled. Oh, they didn't get married though, did they? Less yes. than less they got than married? six yes, months. They got married. That will last. They like eloped in in Vegas or something. It was like a small. And you're very sure they're still intimate. together? I'm almost positive. I know. G Lee two. What is G Lee two going to be made? Uh, maybe two. they rekindled it. I don't know if I'm like I love that or I hate uh, that for them. And last but certainly not least on Scroll Stoppers today, um, you guys may have seen this on our noon CHGO Bears show, but Carm walked in here with 
dog poop on his shoe, on the bottom <laughs> of his shoe. He said it was mud. It definitely was not. But here's our clip from that show today. You have dog shit all over the bottom no, of your I don't. shoe. No. Oh goodness! This is Girl. an iconic I, 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 I have had. It's not. It's, it's just mud for the record. I and, and I have had a terrible. We might have to hold that up to the camera and let the people vote. I want smell a vision. Okay. Now I'm 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 really I'm really thrown off. That's true. You're thrown off. Okay. I'm the right. one who was mid just, intro just, 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 and had to look at just, that. Just just I'm gonna cross my legs like this. There, listen to me. I I've had a very rough morning. I I I took Poppy the puppy for an outstanding walk. Uh, unfortunately, I was doing a little bit of a dance. We were having some fun, and out the phone went into the snow, which I picked up and tried to dry off and all that stuff. And but the phone the phone's done. Won't won't I mean not done, but like won't charge. I need rice. I need something. I can't communicate with 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 anyone. Uh, that was that, and. Um, some what other kind of a phone you have that it won't survive snow. Right, That's come on, saying. let's go. That's Most phones these come on. days, you take them underwater. Come on, come on, uh, come on. I, it's come on iPhone 11, 12, whatever the hell I have. Let's go here. Chop, chop. You telling me you can't a, a, a little five seconds? Now I got dog shit on my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> you have. Do- I mean, honestly, like how how did he not notice that before he got here? It happens. He I mean, he's, he's used to the smell. I. I we work in an alley, off of an alley. Like no, it was poop his dog's the, poop from sh- earlier. Probably. I don't know about that. I don't. Know. I don't think we need to blame Poppy. Based Poppy did nothing alley, wrong. You know what? I, I kind of like that uh, from that clip. Is he's like whatever iPhone I have, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We've actually reached reached the point in the iPhone where it, I I don't know what number I have no, anymore. I don't either. I mean, I have it used the 12. to be a thing. Oh, I've got the iPhone three. I, mean, I have the twelve, and I'm ready to get a new phone. Thirteen Pro, baby. Come on. Where are you guys at? I got yeah. Pro Max, so huh? I couldn't even tell you when I replaced my iPhone. I don't either. I, I will say that. Did you notice in that video, uh, Nicholas Moriano is he's laughing, but deep down, he's real worried because this is a man who who like polishes yes. his Jordans when <laughs> he comes forbid. in. Like he, if I mean, if on some of that dog house. poop was going to make its way over to his Jordans, that was going to be a problem. Yeah, yeah. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. It was gross, but they said they couldn't smell it, so that's they never good. did smell it. Yeah, well, uh, so it could have been mud. I believe, which means I, it was no, earlier. If it was mud, I believe it was towards the end of the show. There was talk of some smelling happening. If Carm mm. truly believed it was mud, he would have put his finger in it and wiped it on his face. Oh my gosh! Oh my god! He knew it wasn't. He knew it wasn't. Mm. Our guy G Man is checking in from Houston. Apparently, he says thank you for Jose Abreu, and you're welcome for the first pick from the Texans. That's right. It was probably first a curse. Was that a wor- was that a trade worth making? Well, I mean, yeah. considering we don't care about the Sox as much as the Bears that run this place, yes. <laughs> we should add, we should bring Vinny back to ask him that. But. That's okay. We could they could talk about it on the on the on the uh, Sox show in seven minutes. So, how many did Vinny get right? He got a lot of them right. Uh, he, I got, think he got five right. He got most of them right. Again, none of his answers were faster than my Smashing Pumpkins, right. which preempted the full. Reading of the question, I had fastest answer, and I had I was the only one to offer up a question that was outside of the scope of the original quiz. So I got two and a half plus an extra Points. one. Points okay, fine. Whose whose music studio is on Belmont, right by the uh, river? Chance the rapper. Wait, who is that? Didn't you tell me about that? Who's Steve studio? Albini, legendary rock producer, right there on Belmont. Just a, a lot to learn. Boy, what a way just to a lowercase letter E. Do you do you think Wilco's a Chicago band or a St. Louis band? They're a, a Chicago, Chicago band. band. Chicago I mean, I, I understand the Jay Bennett era. You're upset yeah. old, old the stuff, viewers. But I, mean, I mean, it's been like 30 Vinny's years. Off, Vinny's off camera going like this. Vinny. Oh, I got another question. He says anyone who could make enough money to get out of St. Louis and come to Chicago is. Wait, I got another yeah. one. Uh, which musician it was, is, has been a frequent diner at Roots Pizza? Nelly. Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who is Lady it? Lady Gaga. Ooh, really? that was yeah, close. Lady <laughs> Gaga. <laughs> twice. Lady you saw Gaga. Lady Gaga twice at Roots twice Pizza? Twice at the one on Chicago Avenue. Right by, over by Nilda's. You just saw her sitting there. Yes. I, in fact, went around the block. Do you I, have a photo? That's how I, I would go down Winchester to go home. I turned right, and they had outdoor seating on the patio one afternoon. And Lady Gaga's just sitting there by herself. You mean to tell me no one was around her? 
nobody. I don't know if she was waiting for the boyfriend that was on Chicago, whatever show oh that was. Oh, my gosh. Med, fire, whatever. And no so one I'm bothered like, her. I'm pretty sure that was Lady Gaga. So I drove around the block. Sure enough, she's just sitting there. That's a good story. Hanging out How in the sun. no one around her, And though? I saw her another time, too. Which famous musician owns Peace Pizza? Dave Grohl. Park. No, that Dave would be in on it. the dude from Cheap Trick, uh, whose name oh, is yeah, the Cheap not Trick. on my brain right now. What? Rick Nielsen. Rick Nielsen. Yes, but Rick Nielsen. I, I believe I didn't Dave know Grohl's that in on it. They go there every time they're in Chicago. Yeah. Peace yeah. Pizza. Foo Fighters. Yeah, that makes Always sense. Always go to Peace Pizza. Probably because they know Rick Nielsen. That, yeah, for sure. <laughs> all right, well, well that was a good show. Blue fighters all the time. Socks coming up in five minutes. And now I just kind of want to like play this out just oh, to make you sweat. And now I got like five, uh, I, I mean, got like five or six off. answers right now. <laughs> all right. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Chicago Sports Podcast. We will be back next Thursday at three p.m. Make sure you leave a great review for us. And <laughs> what was I going to say? And help out our sponsor, <laughs> Goose Island. They're our presenting sponsor, and we appreciate okay. everything they do. Honk. See you next Thursday. See ya.